Hi, my loves, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. I've been doing so many videos recently exposing corruption and talking about all of the negative stuff that's happened to me and Adam and other people I know and people I don't even know on the inside. And it made me think I never want to come across like I'm bitter or I'm just negative and boohooing about the system. I do that to expose corruption. I do that to give a voice to the voiceless and the forgotten on the inside. But I have to say there are plenty of times that I have had staff members and correctional officers and administration treat me really respectfully and actually do me some favors. So not everybody is crooked. There are some really helpful straight COs that want to see people succeed and they want to help and their hearts are in the right place. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk you guys through all of my experiences that I can remember with cops that have treated me really well, that have done me favors, that have done me favors is the wrong way to say it because I don't ever want to sound like they're being inappropriate or unprofessional. Nobody has ever crossed that line with me. It's always been 100% respectful. They just haven't been corrupt. They haven't gone out of their way to make it a miserable experience, they've been helpful. And that's it. I just wanted to clarify because there are so many people on one side of the fence, people who feel like we're always fighting against the corruption because there is so much of it. And there are also a lot of people on this side that feel if somebody does a crime, they deserve time. Their family members should be treated like animals, just like the people on the inside should be treated like animals. I'm not making that up. That is something that somebody actually said to my husband, who, if you don't know, is serving 213 years in federal prison for robberies where nobody was hurt. So if you're new here, welcome. Click that subscribe button if you wanna hear more about his story, my story, why I stick around with him and how we're working towards getting him out and all of my experiences in between. Also do me a favor for all of my OGs and everybody here, if you can hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. Okay. So let's get started. Back when I first started visiting Adam, he was at a United States penitentiary. He was at a very high level security prison and the same correctional officers ran visit every single time I was there. I don't know why they were supposed to change every quarter. This one officer maybe had seniority and he wanted that job every time. There was one that was always at the desk and then the same one that was always up in the visit room when we got there. That cop up at the desk had some issue with Adam so I was never treated properly there and I was always made to change my clothes and to move my car. And there were always just bogus things going on when I tried to get in there. Adam was also, for a period of time, he was the shot caller there. So he was respected, but he wasn't liked. And often that was taken out on me and his parents and his other visitors. The first time I experienced a cop who was really sweet and helpful was my first visit ever when he moved down to the medium security level. I was wearing a pair of jeans that I had worn a hundred times at the other facility, but this place, the metal detector was set very high. And this was back when the true religion types of jeans were in and the back pockets had buttons on them. So there was a lot of metal on my jeans that day. I was conditioned from the very beginning that I always had two or three backup outfits in my car. And obviously they didn't know at this medium security institution, I had been there before. I was new to them, even though my paperwork and my what it said in the computer should have been differently. My picture was there from years before I looked very different. They actually made me retake my picture because I looked very different. I had lost a lot, a lot of weight, a lot of weight when he was in Allenwood. I was very unhealthy at that point, very unhealthy. I looked very sick. And when he moved, I got my health back. I quit smoking. I started eating normally again, and I had put on weight to a regular size. I looked much better. So they didn't recognize me. They actually said that I needed to take my picture again that was in the computer in the federal directory because I looked so different. Sorry for another time. So as I'm trying to get through the metal detector, it keeps beeping. And this one female correctional officer, I always say cop and I try not to because it confuses people. But in the feds, if I say cop, they refer to the correctional officers as cops. I'm not referring to a cop on the street. So this one woman, CO, was so sweet, so, so sweet. She's probably one of the sweetest that I've ever met. On this specific metal detector, they were able to see where on your body or a region in your body the metal was that was setting off the metal detector. So let's say it's bobby pins. They could see it's somewhere up here. Let's say it's your bra. They could see that it's somewhere in this area. So she saw it was somewhere around my waist. She said, it's your pants. And I said, I was so 
nervous. I remember filling out my paperwork there that day and my hands were shaking so bad it was close to illegible. So I said to her in my nervous voice, I was like, can I try again? And she said, of course you can. So I tried again, it kept beeping. And there was a male CO standing next to her and he goes, <laughs> looks like Clawson isn't getting a visit today. And in my head, I thought over my dead body, you wanna bet? I ignored what he said. And I turned to that really sweet female CO and I said, may I go out to the car and change? I have other clothes in there. And she said, of course. And when you're done, she said, don't go back and wait in line. She said, come back up here and I'll let you try again. I was so nervous. I changed my clothes really fast and I went back and she let me try again. She was so sweet and I got through and we were fine and she smiled and it was great. And she was so sweet. So the next time that I had a good experience with a correctional officer was at the same facility. It was also a female CO. And I had seen her quite a few times going in and out of visit. And this one morning she was running visit and she was sitting at the desk and there were a whole bunch of people waiting in the room already. And you are taken in the order that you arrive. And so the visitors in that little processing room always know who's first, who's next, who's at the end of the line. We all have to figure it out because they tried a couple times to number the paperwork that you fill out before you go in and it just kind of turned into a big mess. So everybody takes care of it in there. So that morning, I walked out of the little processing room. I already had filled out my paperwork. I was by myself that day, not with my friends. And cause this was before I had met her. And I went up and I went to the bathroom. They have a bathroom in the little lobby area. And when I come out of the bathroom, the woman says to me, come on, I'm gonna start processing, come up here. And I was like, There's, there are people in there. She said, I know. I'm gonna start with you today because there aren't many decent people that come through here which I found to be such a sweet compliment. In other words, I didn't give her any problems. I'm always very respectful. My clothes are always appropriate. I don't really set off the metal detector unless it's something freak, which I was like, cool, okay, I'm gonna be first. She's gonna let me in. I'm gonna have the most time with Adam. And then I thought about it later. I was like, geez, thank God nobody in that room started a problem with me or started a rumor because people who do shady stuff on the inside get favors. And now thinking about it now, thinking through it, I might have said, thank you so much, but I want to wait in line because it's not appropriate. It's not fair. But then again, they can go to the back and they can bitch to their husband that that girl went in first and they can point out who I'm there to see. And then they would say, he, you've got nothing to worry about. She was doing them a favor. You know what I'm saying? So that was really sweet of her. Another time was actually the same woman, but this happened before that. This is one of my very first times at this medium facility. And I was wearing a long sleeve blouse. That blouse was a little bit tight on me. It was left over from when I was saying that I lost so much weight, I was super skinny. So I had gained some weight back. I wasn't back to my normal size, but I was in the process of gaining weight. So it was a blouse with one of those little pussy bow tie necks and the buttons were gaping just a little bit, not enough to be inappropriate, but just enough to make me feel slightly uncomfortable. But I had a really pretty fur vest over it, a long fur vest, some skinny jeans and some high boots. And it was a really pretty outfit. I obviously don't have a picture. I almost said if I have a picture, I'll post it in there. I don't because what happened was she made me take off the vest. She said, I'm not, I can't allow you to wear that inside. And part of the reason I wore that, this is so interesting, you guys, the way my, my brain works. Adam had been locked up for so long. I'll try to wear things with texture sometimes. I'll try to wear velour or velvet, or I was trying to wear fur because when's the last time he felt fur? They don't have the dog program in there. Where he goes now, they could touch me a little bit, although he wouldn't have been able to touch her. I don't know what I was thinking. He might have been able to like touch my back a little bit as he was walking by. They're not gonna give him a problem for that. Actually, way back then, they allowed us to put our heads on their shoulders. They allowed us to cuddle a little bit. So there would have been a way he could have felt the fur. And I was like, how cool would that be for him? When's the last time he actually felt that? Think about that. If you're not involved in this life, just think about that for a second. He hasn't felt velvet, velour. He hasn't felt fur on an animal or on, and this was faux fur, by the way, you guys, <laughs> save the animals. It wasn't anything expensive. It wasn't anything real or anything like that. You know, just, you don't think of stuff like that. There are so many things that he hasn't seen or touched or done because of where he's been for so long. So anyway, she makes me take off the fur vest and I was kind of bummed because I was really insecure about what I was wearing. Not that Adam was would care. I was just insecure because it was tight. And so I went in, I wasn't gonna give her a problem. And at that point it was freezing out there. So I wasn't gonna go to the car and change. I just wore the shirt underneath. She said, that's fine. You just can't wear the fur vest in there. I, I guess it's too bulky too, which totally understandable. You could hide things in there. I get it. 
everybody at this facility, the way it works there is that they bring you back to the visit room and everybody goes running to the vending machines. Nobody sits in their assigned seats. And there's this mad rush at the vending machines and there's lines and sometimes people get into arguments that they cut each other, this and that. I typically would go and sit down at my seat and I would wait for that rush to die down because first of all, Adam doesn't eat the same food that they do, neither do I, but Adam's not rushing for wings. He's not rushing for the Reese's cake that they have in there. He doesn't eat that type of food even out on visit. So to me, I don't need to run up there. I let the rush die down. So she didn't know that. This was prior to the last incident that I told you about. I forgot about this one till just now. And I was new there. She hadn't seen me before. And she saw that I got upset, insecure, self-conscious without that vest on. So I think she felt a little bit bad for me. So she walked over and she said, hey, I just wanna let you know, if you wanna get some food, you probably should get up there and get it now because they run out really quick here. She was being really nice. She was trying to help me out. She was trying to give me a peace offering. She couldn't say sorry because she was doing her job, but she was trying to say, girl, I get it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to help you now. I didn't mean to make you feel like this. I wasn't trying to be a B. I was just doing my job. Without saying all that, she said it in doing that. So I really appreciated that. I said, thank you. I said, I'm just gonna wait for this to die down a little bit. I don't like to be in that crowd. She goes, oh, I get it. She was really sweet. She doesn't do visit anymore, but she was always very, very, very sweet. I really enjoyed when she was running visit because not just because she did me a favor once, because she was just really pleasant. And I hated it because a lot of the girls would talk so badly about her. She had a really short haircut. She also had a husband who worked there, who we found out maybe two years later, Adam's like, you see this guy? I'm like, yeah. He goes, that's that lady's husband. And I'm like, no way. So they would call her all kinds of dirty names. They would say that she was butchy, this and that. And she wasn't, she was fair. She did her job just like with my vest, but she wasn't nasty about it. So I really appreciated that time. It was a really good experience of turning a negative into a positive where she was doing her job and she wasn't doing it to be a jerk. And she wasn't doing it in a way where she was trying to punish me or punish Adam through making me change my clothes. She was working with me and just following the rules. And I appreciate that. There was also another time where it wasn't a direct helping me out or anything, but I could see what level that this person had me on. So we were walking out of visit and back then visit would end at three o'clock and all of the prisoners, the inmates would go line up against the back wall and they would get strip searched and changed out one at a time. They would be taken in the back and all of us visitors would be taken out at the same time. And we would be walked down. There was probably about a 50 yard walkway and then they lock the door. The cop goes in, tells the control room, everything is good, he's fine. He's not, not under duress. And then they unlock the door, they let us all in. That happens again twice and then they let us out. It's, it's a quick process. It sounds like a lot, but it's a quick process once you're used to it, you have a cop that's been doing it for a while. So this one day, as we're walking down that 50 yards, the cop's a bit ahead of us and then there's a group of us and there's one girl just kind of in between me and the officer. And she, obviously it was her first time there and she was enamored with the fact that she was out of prison and she was looking back to, at all of the fences and the barbed wire because you see, if you look over your shoulder, there's the back building, but there's also a grassy area and then the housing units. Around the housing unit are fences. At the top of the fences, you see big circles of razor wire weaved through the top of the fence. So obviously somebody can't climb over the fence and get out. The fences are also motion censored where they'll send shocks if somebody's climbing on them. That's a story for another time too. Plus there's a watchtower. There's a lot of security going on there. So she's looking and she's seeing all this prison stuff and she's like, cool, not really talking to anybody, but she goes, cool. It's just like you see on TV. It really is just like TV. And as she's talking, the cop, like I said, is probably five feet ahead of us. I'm here to his left, she's a bit behind him to his right and he looks over his shoulder at me and gives me this glance like, <laughs> she's gotta be kidding. And we both kind of just exchanged a look like we knew what each other was saying, like cuckoo, cuckoo. And so it's not where, he wasn't, he didn't do anything nice, but it made me feel like he put me on a different level, if that makes sense. We were cool, he was 
cool enough to be able to do that. Didn't do anything disrespectful, but he's kind of giving me this glance like, are you hearing this? This is weird. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm hearing this. And I kind of gave him a smile. And I don't know why I think that story was fun. I think it was funny. I think it was kind of cute the way that she was acting, kind of sad the way she was acting. Part of me sometimes wonders if this is so cool, I would so happily exchange my lifelong membership card to this cool elite club with anybody who wants it any day of the week. You could have it. I will give it to you for free. <laughs> so you gotta laugh at these things. You gotta make jokes. Otherwise, what's my option? What are my options, right? There are also a lot of times where visit will get overcrowded and instead of kicking people out, there have been quite a few times where the cops that are running visit, the COs, the correctional officers that are running visit will be really helpful and they will go to closets, they'll go into extra storage rooms and they'll pull out chairs. They'll create extra lines of chairs. They'll start moving people around to accommodate everybody that's there before they have to start terminating visits and kicking people out, which is really cool because other cops that are crooked, corrupt, or just don't care, they see that there's a couple people downstairs and they're like, okay, you guys have to go, you guys have to go. They don't care to make extra room. They, they don't care that there's two open chairs there or that there's one open chair there and one open chair there. So if they move around a couple of people, then they can get a set of two. They just don't care. They just, it's nothing to them, just kick people out. I actually have a video that I made recently about all of the times I've been terminated from visits and the times that I've seen people get terminated from visits for something similar and for things way worse that were corrupt. And I'll post that up in the YouTube cards. And kind of along the same lines, this one happened to me personally. There was one day that it was getting overcrowded. They weren't having to terminate anybody. They weren't even having to take extra chairs out, but there were two officers that came upstairs. One was actually an officer, one was a lieutenant. And the lieutenant was a woman and she had it out for Adam. I actually had somebody call me and warn me and said, this lady, I don't know what her deal is, but she has it out for your husband, so just be careful. Yeah. So she comes in to visit and I see her. I didn't know who she was, but Adam said to me, that's the lady. So I kind of got <clears throat> nervous. I got in the mode where my hands are always showing. I'm, I'm not touching anything. I'm not touching him. I'm very head forward, sit up straight, hands crossed. Every, you just get nervous because they can make anything up. And remember, like I always say, the cameras are inconclusive, but we're not gonna go down that road because this is a video about the positive stuff. And there are quite a few, like I'm talking about positive stories and this one turned into one. So there was this man running visit that day. He was really cool. He was a great cop. He still is a great cop. So I was in the back corner right in front of the cop's desk one time at visit and I was telling Adam a story and I said to him, I went to go visit my best friend who had just recently joined CrossFit, which was awesome because she had lost 100 pounds, never worked out a day in her life. And then she started taking CrossFit classes. So I went to go take a class with her one time and she's really strong. She's always been very strong, even when she was overweight, even when we were little girls, because we knew each other since we were seven. She was just a very naturally strong person. I'm not the strongest person in the gym, but I will be the one that carries you with endurance. I could just keep going and going and going, but I can't, I'm not going to be the girl that lifts 300 pounds. It's just not my genetics. It's not the way my muscle fibers are made up. So we were doing a partner workout and part of it was burpees, which I was killing. And part of it, you had to pick up the bar and you had to do stuff with it. And then you had to drop the bar. And that's when you did your burpees over the bar. So she's like, pick it up. Let's go. And I was dying. So, and I said the word clean and he's watching me talking about cleaning and bars and this and that. And I didn't realize he was a bodybuilder. So he asked Adam later, he made a comment about it when Adam had gone to the bathroom and he asked what we were talking about. And Adam told him that I used to be into the bodybuilding stuff and I used to compete in fitness. So ever since that day, he was really nice and he would chit chat with me, never inappropriately, but he was training to do his first fitness competition. And I would talk to him about bodybuilding and things to expect when you go backstage at a show, etc. Really cool guy really cool guy. Never inappropriate, but very cool, very friendly, very down to earth, normal. He was one of the ones that would always line up extra chairs and we would always joke with him. We're like, oh, you're working hard today. Deadlifting tables off the floor, bodybuilder, moving them so people could fit, cool guy. So this woman, the lieutenant and her sidekick walk up that day to the cop's 
desk and we see her say something to him and we see him say something back and we see her get a little frazzled and those two leave they look around the room and they leave and so we didn't think twice about it eventually it did start getting overcrowded and they had to kick people out we got to stay that day and it's kind of just the luck of the draw when you're there and after i left adam told me the next day when that cop was changing him out he's like listen i just want to give you a heads up I don't know what her deal is with you, but she came in and she said, do me a favor, make up an excuse, kick Clawson and his wife out today. For no reason, just because she didn't like us. And so he said, thank God, he said back to her, because he was secure enough in himself. And a lot of people don't do this. They get afraid, they don't want to make problems, and they're, they're just, they do what they're told which you can't blame people for, but thank God he was secure enough within himself where he said to her, do you wanna come back here and do my job for me? Cause if you do, that's cool, I'll go home. But if not, then let me do my job myself. And that's when we saw her get frazzled and walk out. If it wasn't for that guy, I would have definitely been terminated from visit that day and who knows what they would have made up that I could have lost my visits for an extended period of time. So that guy really, really saved my butt saved Adam's butt and he was the MVP of this whole entire video. So there are good people out there, you guys. Unfortunately, there's so much corruption that I have more stories about that. And I try so hard, so hard to be a voice for the people who are voiceless, for the people who need that corruption exposed because it could save their lives. But today, this video is dedicated to the people who are the good ones. The good ones who are fighting so hard against the grain of the old school us versus them, they're all animals, corrupt prison mentality. I thank them with my whole entire hearts. If you have any stories about good COs, ways that you've been treated appropriately, I would love to start a comment thread below so that they can see that they need to keep doing this, that we're not all bitter, that we're not just here to bash them and to fight against them too. It's easy for us to go in there with chips on our shoulder because they have chips on the shoulder it feels, and they're taking out whatever insecurities and aggressions that they have on us, it feels. But thank you from the bottom of my heart to the good ones. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to it all being behind you. And Lord knows, so am I. Lots of love from my heart to yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Bye guys.